Hi, welcome to James Miller Lifeology, where you learn to simplify and transform your spirit, mind, and body. My name is James Miller. I'm a licensed psychotherapist and a composer. Thank you so much for joining with us today. Let's get started. I really wanted to take a quick second just to thank all of you who continually support and listen to James Miller Lifeology Radio. It has been such an exciting adventure for me. There are so many amazing things that are happening over here that I definitely want to share with you. So for the next few months, every person who signs up for my free newsletter will be entered into a drawing. In this monthly drawing, whomever wins will win a free 30-minute Skype call with me, James Miller. I will help you simplify and transform your spirit, mind, and body. So go to my website, jamesmillerlifeology.com, and sign up for my free newsletter there. Who knows? Maybe you will be the lucky winner. So sign up today. Did you know that on jamesmillerlifeology.com, you can enroll in the academy I created for listeners just like you? I've created courses you may take at your own pace, which will help you simplify and transform your spirit, mind, and body. Enroll in one of the classes today. I have a great show for you today. I'm going to help you improve your self-esteem. I'll also be interviewing life coach Amy Teasdale, who shares her story of growing up with low self-esteem until she had a powerful transformation. She now uses her coaching company to empower her clients to reach their highest potential. For more information about Amy, please visit amycteasdale.com. I have some exciting news. Did you know that I'm on the radio three times a week? You may hear me on the same station on Tuesdays at 1.30 p.m., Fridays at 9.30 a.m., and Saturdays at 12.30 p.m. You may also hear me on iHeartRadio, as well as on all the other major podcasting platforms, such as iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and many others. Simply search for the show name, James Miller Lifeology. You all know me as a psychotherapist, but some of you may not yet know me as a composer. I currently have two albums which have been released. Think of both albums like books. Each original composition is written like a chapter in a book. The first album, Consolation, explores a character's grief and loss. And just like in any book, the story explores a character's heartache and eventually he finds healing and hope. The second album, Restoration, explores a character's personal development. He has an awakening, and in that awakening, he recognizes all the things in his life which aren't healthy, and it helps him come to a place of restoration, being restored to something greater than before. You may purchase both albums on iTunes or any other digital music store. The names of the albums are Consolation and Restoration, and my stage name is James S. Miller. The name of the piece you're currently hearing is from the second album, Restoration, entitled Farewell. example of one of the courses you'll find in the academy entitled when all hell breaks loose (laughs) we've all experienced those times when nothing seems to go right this class will specifically train you how to process the event regroup and use what was thought as a stumbling block and turn it into a stepping stone enroll in the class today In a garden filled with bushes, out from between a load of grass and weeds, there appeared, as if from nowhere, a white rose. It was as white as driven snow. Its petals looked like velvet, and the morning dew shone from its leaves like resplendent crystals. The flower couldn't see herself, so she had no idea how pretty she was. And so it was that she spent the few days of her life, until wilting set on, without knowing that all around her were amazed by her and her perfection. Her perfume, the softness of her petals, her elegance. She didn't realize that everyone who saw her spoke well of her. The weeds that surrounded her were fascinated by her beauty, and lived in a state of enchantment at her aroma and appearance. One hot and sunny day, a girl was strolling through the garden, thinking about how many beautiful things there were in the world, when she suddenly saw the white rose in a forgotten part of the garden. The rose was beginning to fade and wilt. It's been days since it's rained, the girl thought. If the rose stays here till tomorrow, it'll be totally withered. I'll take it home and put it in a lovely vase that I just purchased. And so she did. With all her love, she put the wilting white rose in water, inside a lovely colorful glass vase, and placed it by the window. I'll put it here so the flower can get some sun, the girl thought. What the young girl didn't realize was that the reflection from the window meant that for the first time, the rose got to see herself and what she truly looked like. Is that me? thought the rose. Little by little, her drooping leaves began to rise, once again stretching up towards the sun, and gradually, the rose recovered her former appearance. When she was totally back to herself, she looked at her reflection and saw that she was indeed a beautiful flower. She thought, wow, until now, I hadn't realized who I was. How could I have been so blind? The rose came to realize that she had spent her days without appreciating her beauty, unable to see herself, unable to know who she really was. If you really want to know who you are, forget everything that's around you, and just look inside your heart. Improve your self-esteem. When we grow up, our environment determines our worth and our value. 
For the majority of us, our parents were affirming and very encouraging and helped us overcome difficulties that we had. As we grew up, many different circumstances in life continued to determine how we viewed ourselves. We've all experienced many painful things in our life, but sometimes we get stuck in those situations and then we label ourselves based off of what we went through. For example, if you're brokenhearted after a traumatic breakup, well, then you're the brokenhearted person. You're the lonely person or you gain a lot of weight, you're the obese person. Those different labels that we slap onto our life determines our value and our self-worth based on how we see ourselves in the world. But remember, the events that we went through are just simply events. They're not who we are unless we think that's who we are. The majority of us would not go up to a stranger or even to our friends and mock them or say negative things to them. But unfortunately, we often do that for ourselves. I recently did an episode about self-compassion that I recommend that you listen to as well. But this self-compassion helps you really view yourself in a different way. Unfortunately, society and the media will often present people in their best light. You look at all of our social media. Well, we always show everybody what we want them to see, our amazing life. But how we truly view ourselves when no one is around could be pretty bleak. When the world presents that we live in an ideal world, our realistic world often doesn't compare. And we continually feel badly about ourselves and continually hope that nobody finds out who we truly are because we often feel as if we're a fraud. When you can recognize the difference between your ideal self and your realistic self, for one, it may not be that far apart, but when you can recognize where you're at today and appreciate who you are today and how far you've come in your life, that then starts to reset the threshold for how you view yourself. There's absolutely nothing wrong with working towards an ideal version of yourself, but realize you're never going to attain that ideal version of who you want to be. Unfortunately, that's unattainable, but there's nothing wrong with striving for it. For example, it's important today, when you look in the mirror, what do you see? What do you say to yourself? The majority of us can name multiple things that we'd like to see different, but the truth is that's who you are. When you are looking in the mirror, look yourself in the eye, give yourself a compliment, see what happens. And if you find that it's difficult for you to give yourself a compliment, then that really shows you how you perceive yourself. The self-affirmations you create every day determine how you start to see yourself. The majority of us just go on autopilot and think different things about ourselves and don't actively challenge some of those negative belief systems. Who told you that you'll never amount to anything? Who told you that you're not good enough? Who told you that you're never going to meet that man or woman of your dreams? All of those are lies. But if you believe these negative thoughts or believe these negative belief systems, then unfortunately that's as high as you're going to go. I'd really challenge you to look at all areas of your life. How do you perceive yourself? And when you really look at that logically, you will realize that the majority of things you think about yourself are not true. But for some reason, you've believed them. Challenge those belief systems today. Your self-esteem is a gift that is given to you. You get to decide what you're going to do with it. You get to decide how high it will be. Do you feel frustrated and totally confused when it comes to dressing? Do you have a closet full of clothes, yet still nothing to wear? Hi everyone, I'm Liana Shaouli, the founder of Image Therapist International. And for over 25 years, I've mentored everyone from celebrities to CEOs in matters of their personal style. And celebrities, believe it or not, are really frustrated, just like you. Anyone can learn personal style. You just need to know what system is and how to apply that to your body. Most people have absolutely no idea that dressing is a learnable skill, which can totally transform your life. That's why I created the process of image therapy. We undress your spirit so we get to dress your body. You don't need to be famous to benefit from this powerful process. Just be open to learning because transformation happens from the inside out as you learn to use your closet like a toolbox for your empowerment. And to start your personal style exploration and to receive this beautiful gift that I have for you of your own image blueprint, please join me today at BeTheOffer.com. Did you know that I have a YouTube channel? <laughs> That's actually how Lifeology started. I have well over 150 episodes that I've created specifically for you. I do know many people struggle with listening to a full 30-minute show, so these YouTube episodes are about three minutes long. Each episode teaches you one simple lesson that you can practice daily, which will help you simplify and transform your spirit, mind, and body. Simply go to my website, jamesmillerlifeology.com, and subscribe to my YouTube channel there, or go to youtube.com and search for my name, James Miller Lifeology. Amy C. Teasdale is a life coach and speaker with over 10 years experience in the field of psychology and personal development. Having grown up in a low-income family and spending most of her early adulthood suffering with low confidence and self-doubt, Amy began a transformational journey of personal growth that has got her to where she is today, running a successful business that allows her to live a life on her own terms. Welcome to my show, Amy. Hi, great to be speaking to you. Yes, it's such a pleasure to have you here today. You are calling all the way from London. 
That's right. Yeah. I love having international guests. In fact, <laughs> we know a similar person, Adele McClay, a fantastic woman who was a guest on my show before. So I'm so glad that she linked us together. Right. Yeah. Sounds good. Now, the person with whom I'm speaking today is not the person the, that you were when you were a child. Mm -hmm. well, I really want to go through how you morphed into the amazing woman that you are today. So in the yeah. intro, we talked about how you grew up in a low income family and you had mm -hmm. really low confidence and self doubt. Can mm -hmm. you help us understand how you were at that time? What kind of caused that in your life to, to maybe have you have those, those looping thoughts of self doubt? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, so if, quite a few things, really. As I mentioned, I mean, uh, the family I grew up in, we, we didn't really have much money sort of growing up. Um, I was kind of teased at school because mm. I was the, the kid in the class that couldn't afford the regular high street designer labels. And, I, you know, I never got the opportunity to go on holiday abroad with my parents like everybody else in the class was. Um, so there was, uh, there was elements of that which kind of made me feel uh, like I was different to mm. the others sure. and sort of behind in some way. Um, and the, the sort of town that I lived in generally, I mean, it was it wasn't a particularly great um, town. It was uh, quite quite a poor town generally, really. And um, I'd say I lived a pretty sheltered life really up until the age of 18. Obviously, I didn't really have much opportunity to really go f sort of leave the environment mm -hmm. that I'd grown up in. Yeah. Right. Um, but I was very fortunate to have parents who, um, you know, encouraged me to do well at school and could see that getting a good ed education would be a sort of passport for me, if you like, to, to being able to create a life that they weren't sort of able to provide for me. So sure enough, I uh, went to university and uh, it was this kind of first experience in my life where I really started to have my eyes sort of opened, mm. I guess, to the big wide world that sure. was out there, um, and to all the different things that, and all the different opportunities uh, and that kind of thing. But of course, coming from the, the place that I came from, I didn't really consider that that was something possible for me. I, I had um, quite a few limiting beliefs. I was uh, I was also very shy as well, so I didn't Oh, that makes it even harder, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't feel comfortable talking to people that I didn't know. And um, not long after I graduated from university, I moved to London where things were just even 10 times more magnified mm -hmm. than what I- Such a fast to. pace as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And so much diversity, you know, so many people from all different walks of life doing all sorts of different things. And uh, yeah, I just kind of really felt like, well, that's okay for them. They can do that, but mm. I can't. What on earth do I know? I'm just this little girl from this little crappy town that, you know, uh, what and I, what? I? how could I possibly achieve these things? Yeah. And, you know, I'd, I'd made friends with people who would- go off and just talk to people they didn't know and they go traveling the world and friends that got their own businesses. And I was like, whoa, that's just mm -hmm. crazy. Well, um, I wanted to ask you, what would be the label, you know, let's, with one sentence, what would you say the label would be or maybe the looping thought that replayed through your mind? What, what do you think it was mm -hmm. about you that you kept thinking over and over again every time mm -hmm. you would have a new experience or maybe when you would see your friends do different things? What, what was it? Mm -hmm. Well, the in terms of the negative side, so before mm -hmm. I created the transformation, it was it was probably I'm not good enough. Mm, yeah, um, and I think that's one that many people do suffer yeah, with. You know, it's it, we are we're always comparing and contrasting, and we're never good mm -hmm. enough. And I think yeah. you know, it's funny when you look at the world, you're always going to meet someone who is more successful than you are. You know, someone yeah. who's funnier than you are, someone who's more attractive yeah. than you are. But I think in our mind, when that becomes a thing of oh, I'm I can't celebrate. The amazing person that I am, and we're always mm. less than. That's when we yeah. always feel as if there's no hope for us, and then we just absolutely. have the self defeatist behavior. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was definitely I'm not good enough, and probably a touch of just feeling insignificant. I guess, mm -hmm. like yeah. you know, I, well, I'm a nobody, or who am I to say that, or who am I to do that, or and just a general feeling of um, not being capable to mm -hmm. do those things. But you know what I what I was reading your bio as well. I think you really transformed that because mm -hmm. you may not have been, felt like you were good enough, but you excelled at university, you excelled in mm. your school and you got all those grades. So I think in some way there was a part of you, that healthier version of you that you may not even have been aware of yet that mm. you're saying, I'm going to thrive regardless. So I always love to point out, and I'm sure you already knew this, but that resilience in you that was there mm. from a little girl, you probably didn't yeah. realize it until you know, today with the person who I'm speaking yeah. with right now. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I definitely say that in terms of being ambitious. So again, I, I was sort of lucky that my parents encouraged me and sort of told me that there was a life out there mm -hmm. beyond 
uh, the sort of town that I lived in. And they, I don't know, I guess I got a feeling of ambition and just a feeling of, yeah, I want to go and see more. I, I want to go and achieve these things. Uh, I just didn't know how to do it at the time, really, but I knew I wanted it. Um, you know, I'd got that drive and that hunger in me to create a better life for myself. That's awesome. And I think that's kind of what, um, that, that's, that's what pulled me through, really, that mm-hmm. hunger. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, unfortunately, you went through a very traumatic breakup right after mm. university. Um, yeah. Where he was your world. He was everything. And, yeah. and, and on the other side of it, I'm sure there's a lot of times of reflection. But can you walk us through that? Because we've all experienced yeah. heartache, and, and we definitely can, yeah. can understand where you're coming from in this respect. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So we met at university in, uh, just before our final year and we fell head over heels in love. It was beautiful. It was magical. Uh, we honestly thought that we would be together for the rest of our lives. We went traveling together. We moved to London together. Um, and I don't know, probably after about six months or so, things started to fall apart and we didn't mm-hmm. feel the same way about each other anymore. But the situation I was in at the time was that he'd already come from London and he'd already got his friends and his stability mm, in London, sure. whereas I didn't. It was, it was established. Brand new. Yeah, exactly. It was, for me, it was a completely brand new city. So I was almost reliant on him in some ways in terms of wanting to go out and do stuff or explore or to make friends. And at the time, you know, I'd only just graduated. I hadn't got a clue what I wanted to do in terms of <laughs> career so yeah so I just didn't really have much for myself outside of that and when that relationship ended it it felt like my whole life had ended Mm -hmm. and um and again I just kind of got to the point where I was like I don't want my life to be this way you know I, I again I just got that ambition and that hunger especially having moved to London and starting to have my eyes opened you know I just wanted more I wanted to explore more I wanted to travel more I wanted to do more but knew that I needed to make some changes in order to make that happen essentially yeah. and um, the, the end of the relationship really fueled that at the time, it was really hard. Oh, my gosh. Time, yeah, of course it was. You know, it's one of those things you look back on and you think, wow, it's one of the best things that ever happened. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, I, I think it really goes back to when you looked at your life, and I'm thinking about my own life, and I'm sure my listeners know mm-hmm. is, is for themselves, is what was our identity? You know, your identity as a little girl was what your peers said, and then that, that mm-hmm. thought that you have that you weren't good enough. And then maybe in university, it was, you know, I am a psychology major, or mm-hmm. I am, you know, I am the girlfriend of so-and-so. And your identity was changing, but it wasn't your mm. own identity. It was an identity that your peers put you in, or your university put you in, mm. or your relationship put yeah. you in. But it wasn't your intrinsic idea of who am I? You weren't able to find that yet. Yeah. And um, yeah, I know, of course, later on in your story, you've learned it. But I think in that moment, I think it's something we all have to ask yourself is really, yeah. who am I? What is my identity? Yeah. And if we're letting external circumstances figure that out for us, and unfortunately, yeah. it's not going to be, it, it's going to change. It's going to yeah. fall apart because things yeah. that are not intrinsically true to ourselves will fall yeah. apart. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, totally get that. And then you went off and you worked on a cruise ship. Yeah, well, so what happened was um, I'd been in London for about a year and a half, two years, and uh, the breakup had happened and I'd started this new life being single and making things happen for myself and just starting to really enjoy that and embrace my independence. Mm -hmm. Um, But at the same time, I was working in a corporate office job Monday to Friday, nine to five, and there was just some point that I sat there, I was like, is this really all there is to life? Is this really how I'm going to spend the next 40, 50 years just sat at a desk working for somebody else? So it's just like that. It just didn't sit well with me. So um, I remembered that when I was a kid at school, I'd got this idea of working on a cruise ship. But at the time, I had <laughs> no idea what yeah. I'd do. And I just thought, oh, let's just see what jobs exist on cruise ships these days. So I Googled it. And then lo and behold, the first thing that comes up, the first result said uh, trainee photographer and what was funny was that I'd started photography as a hobby out of the back of the relationship breaking up so oh interesting you know as I said that I decided that I wanted to create my own life and pursue my own passions and interests well photography was one of them Uh so it was just like it was like just like this sign or this green light when I typed it into google it's like trainee photographer on cruise ships I was like this is amazing Mm. so I and sure uh, I got the job and I went away for a couple of years and that was both the most amazing but probably also the most difficult period of my life as well I mean everybody I think has this idea of working on a cruise ship how glamorous it is and you know being around the Caribbean and all that kind of stuff but yeah don't get me wrong you do have some amazing experiences and I'm incredibly fortunate to have visited some of the places that I visited but it does come with a lot of hard work and a lot of pressures and everything uh, with it as well but 
again, it was one of those times that because of how difficult it was, it was also one of the best things that ever happened to me. You know, I grew, grew so much through that experience and, mm-hmm. you know, complete change in my way of life and all of that. So, yeah, it was, it was great. Well, you know, yeah, as you're saying that, I'm thinking about this. You're, you're this young girl from a, a small, small town. Mm-hmm. Um, you go to the big city of London. Mm-hmm. And now you're traveling the world. Those, those things that you... When you were younger, I thought, oh, I can't do that. Or I can't believe my friends are doing mm. this. And now you're actually doing it. Did you ever stop yeah. and think like, wow, yeah. how far my life has come? And, and of course, even now you can say that even more. But at that time, did you really stop and think like, wow, as a little girl, I always yeah. wanted to do this. And here I yeah. am, I'm doing it. Yeah. Well, even now, sometimes I look back and think, wow, I can't believe I did that. You know? <laughs> That's really cool, Amy. <laughs> um, but... But, you know, I, I want my life to be full of experiences where I say, mm. I can't believe I did that rather than I wish I'd have done that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. exactly. That's a really good point. You know, I want to <laughs> just jump back real quickly because, um, yeah. you know, I think the, the question you ask yourself, is this all there is to life? That's one mm-hmm. thing I really like to kind of hone in on just for a second with, with my listeners. I want you to understand that if, if mm-hmm. you ask that question at any time in your life, that is a symptom of mediocrity. So mm. I always tell people, as soon as that thought comes in your mind, or you think, you're, you think, oh my gosh, if I have to hang out with my friends one more time and go to the mm. bars, or if I have to push this paper one more time in my office, yeah. that means in that particular area of your life, it's a form of mediocrity. So you yeah. got to be aware of that. You got to level up to something different, find yeah. whatever it is, tweak it. doesn't mean you have to have a huge change, but it just means you need yeah. to tweak what you're doing. Yeah, it's so true. I, I totally agree with you. Like m- one of my biggest passions, which is kind of, well, one of my biggest values really, and also what underpins what I do in my work now is is helping people to live a life that they love. And that's mm. my own biggest personal value and not just settling for mediocrity or average or something that's boring. It's all about, you know, making the most out of this wonderful opportunity that we have to experience life. Yes. And it really is a gift. I mean, many times people are like, oh, life is hard and life is this and that. And mm. yeah, there are ups and downs, but life is mm. a beautiful gift. You know, how you mm. start your day, how you start your, your thoughts in the morning is indicative of how it's going to go. And so we have yeah. that responsibility. We have that choice to say, hey, yeah. I'm awake. I'm alive. What am I going to do with it? Yeah, absolutely. And especially in the Western world, you're like, yes, of course, we do have difficulties and stuff. But again, we're even just so much more privileged that in the Western world, we mm-hmm. have the opportunities and the freedoms that we do. We, you know, it, I am so privileged that I can make fulfillment and living a fulfilling life a goal of mine. There are many millions and millions of people in the world that don't have that um, possibility even there yeah. for them. Yeah, exactly. And it is. I mean, so we are so fortunate. And I think that's one thing when because we're so fortunate in so many ways, then we almost have more of a responsibility to appreciate it more. Mm. Because I mean, so many people would be like, oh my gosh, I wish I could, was able to do that. Or I was able yeah. to do this. You know, for example, you, when you were younger, for example, me, when I was younger, I didn't come from a well-off family either. But yeah. the point is, is when we looked at those people who could travel, we were less fortunate, even though we're in the Western yeah. world, but we're less fortunate. We're like, oh, I wish I could do that. So on this side, when we're more successful and yeah. we're really able to appreciate it. And so now, like I said, it's really yeah. our responsibility to live yeah. in that joy, live in that, in the yeah. wonderful opportunities we have. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. So moving forward, so after the cruise ship, what did you end up doing? Yeah, so it was during that period, as I said, it was a really big personal development sort of journey for me. And I'd realized that I didn't want to go back to being employed and working for somebody else and that I would want to work for myself and have my own business. And when I looked back on what are my skills, what are my strengths, what am I passionate about? It was just clear that it was psychology, it was personal development. And I'd obviously thought a lot about my own personal development. I'd spent the last few years uh, of my 20s really learning how to become the person that I wanted to be and how to overcome my barriers and the things that were holding me back. And so I thought this is a bit of a no brainer, really, you know, Mm -hmm. I'll I'll go into life coaching because this is obviously my gift. It's what I've invested in. It's what I'm passionate about. And I can help others to do the same. So after the cruise ship, I came home back to London. I started a part time job whilst I trained to become a life coach. And then once I'd completed the qualification, I then started my own business and then a few months later, uh, quit my part-time job, which was great. And oh, uh, now, now work fully for myself uh, as a life coach. That's amazing. Now, some people may not really know what a life coach is. Yeah. How about you define it specifically for you and how it makes sense in your business? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll give you a little analogy first of all. So imagine you have goals to lose weight and you want to go to the gym and you get a personal trainer. And the personal trainer is there to help, support and guide you towards that goal. 
goal. Well, a life coach is pretty much the same, but with your life in general, mm-hmm. as opposed to specifically um, health or fitness or weight loss goals and things like that. So it's generally to help a person move forward in their life to help them achieve whatever it is they, that they want to achieve. Now, lots of different coaches will maybe focus on specific things or lots of different things. What I focus on in my coaching is helping people to become the person they want to be and helping people to live a life that they love. Because I feel that that really sums up everything that my journey has been about and everything that I can relate to. And and like I said, I, I don't see success as being about money or mm-hmm, sure. getting to the top of the career ladder. It's about being the person you want to be and enjoying the life that you're living and being authentic with the life that you're living. So, so that's what I help uh, others to do now. That's amazing, Amy. And I do really think that that is the case. Most people, if they only use your metric of success as finances, and there's absolutely mm. nothing wrong with that, but if it's so unipolar, in other words, if that's mm. the only version of it, well, mm. you could be the most financially secure person, but your health is bad or your relationships yeah. are really poor absolutely. or your spiritual life or your wh- whatever it may be. I mean, yeah. that may be totally unbalanced. So yeah. it's great that there's someone like you, a life coach like yourself, who's able to help people find that balance yeah. and look at yeah. all areas of our life. Because if we're unbalanced in one way, it's going to trickle down in every other area of our life. And then pretty soon we wake up, we're like, oh, I have all this money, but there's no one in my life. Yeah, <laughs> Which exactly. I'm not laughing at that, but I'm saying the point is, is it, it can be absurd when we think of it in the perspective like that. Yeah. In the sense yeah. of, gosh, I really want to be fulfilled in all areas. And mm-hmm. I really think that's the thing. When people start this now, as opposed to way off later in their, in their career or later off in life, mm-hmm. you can fully enjoy all the beautiful things that life has when yeah. you start this exploration now, as yeah. opposed to yeah. only being um, unilaterally focused on one metric yeah. of success, which is finances. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's so important because at the end of the day, we don't know how much longer we've all got to live. I mean, you know, we sort of live life as though we're uh, invincible and nothing's ever going to happen. But that's just not true. You know, yeah. we might have a day, a year. 10 years, 20 years, we don't know how long we've got left to live. And I think it's just really important that we we make the most of the time that we have now rather than putting things off until later and saying, oh, I'll do that when or when I've got that, then then I'll do this. Life's happening right now and you it don't is, know how yes. long it's going to last for. Yes, it's a really, really good point. So what's next for you, Amy? What's next on the horizon for you? So what's next is to continue to grow the business, really. I love working with uh, new clients, working with people that I have a really good click with. And um, my main focus is on growing that. And I mentioned also in the bio about um, building a business that allows me to live life on my own terms. So Mm -hmm. a lot of my business and my work is online. So I do coaching online, which gives me the opportunity to work from anywhere in the world, essentially. So that's great. A personal thing for me is I'd uh, just I'm planning to just do more traveling and see more of the world while still growing the business at the same time, you know, and, and helping people to achieve their dreams in the same way that I am. So, so that's yeah, wonderful. that's kind of like my next big thing, really. That's wonderful. You know, that's one of the things I did myself as well. My listeners know this is I mm-hmm. gave up, well, I should say I gave up everything, but I needed a change for my own life. And so mm-hmm. I wanted to create what the next version of my life to do whatever it is I want to do, wherever yeah. I want to do it. Absolutely. And so we essentially do the same thing as far as our, the foundation for living life yeah. on our own terms is how we live our life. <laughs> and then, yeah, exactly. And we, we build everything else around. And it's beautiful. You know, right now, I'm a block from the ocean. You know, I'm yeah. looking out over a beautiful park right now. And where I was at before was a beautiful place, but I'm so much happier now, you know, because yeah. I made that change. And, and you're no different, I'm no different than, than the people that are listening to us right now. We all can yeah. make a change. It doesn't have to be yeah. a drastic change. It's just yeah. a simple thing. It can start in your thought. I yeah. want to do something different, or I want to be better at this, or I want to improve yeah. in this in my life. Okay, well, let me do it. You know, then yeah. I think so many times people think, oh, I got to make this huge, drastic mm. change. That's not it at all. You know, no. what is it? A, um, the journey of a thousand miles starts with one step. I probably Absolutely. totally butchered that that yeah. um, parable, but <laughs> you get the you get the gist. <laughs> it, it starts with just one small thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So Amy, if my listeners would like to find out more information about you and perhaps even hire you to be a life coach, where will they find your information online? Yeah, sure. So the best place to go is to my website, which is amyctesdale.com. Amy is spelled A-I-M-E-E, C for Charlene, and then Teasdale is T-E-E-S-D-A-L-E, so amyctesdale.com. And you can uh, find out more about me and my coaching on there and just get in touch with me through there if, uh, if anyone's interested. Excellent. Thank you so much, Amy, for being a guest on my show today. I really appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure.
I also want to thank you, my listener, for joining with me today. Please subscribe to this radio show through whichever portal you joined with me. Also, please go to my website where you may sign up for my newsletter, enroll in the Lifeology Academy, watch my YouTube episodes, and read all the articles I've written just for you. If you'd like to become a guest or advertise on my show, simply visit jamesmillerlifeology.com. You may also follow me on all social media platforms under the name James Miller Lifeology, except for Twitter, which is James M. Lifeology. Have a fantastic day, and I look forward to speaking with you very soon.